So this video is going to be after I left the grove. I've already talked a little bit about um, uh, wood spring up near uh, Breaker and IH35 across from Victor Road or Victor Lane. But um, uh, I was there for like I think a month and a half. And uh, so they're from like July to near the end of August. And um, <laughs> here's Max. Uh, and is mean Max. And uh, uh, I happened to be room 409, which was really weird because room 409, uh, or the 409 was basically the, uh, the exact amount plus some change as the room rate once the. Uh, uh, the taxes were taken off, um, which happened after 30 days in Austin. You're considered a resident there, and you don't have to pay the the sales tax or the hotel tax or whatever it is. And um, and um, so um, uh, when I was there, this nonsense kept going on, and. Um, uh, at the Grove, it had been sexual a few times, and here, uh, and at the um, uh, Wood Spring, it was, you know, painful a lot of times, and then they started turning it sexual again. Um, there were even the times where I was walking around the hotel, like a few blocks away from the hotel, and I felt like I was suddenly, like, high, and I, like, dropped to my knees, and I almost thought it was very hot outside, and I don't think I was having heat stroke, but they kept doing it, and I, I kept feeling like, a rush that was like non-stop and growing and I was like I think I'm gonna have heat stroke guys we need to stop this and um, there were a few times in the hotel when um, I was masturbating and then they added their electricity to it and um, it felt really good it's just the fact that I don't want to be stimulated by terrorists you know and that's better than uh, than the torture the other torture but it's still torture and it's still non-consensual, and it's still not desirable, and it's still fucked up. Um, one incident that happened there was, uh, and this is very important because this is an example of how they can fuck with your, uh, fuck with uh, events and your perceptions and make other people seem like they're sketchy, and they may be, but you're not necessarily sure of it. And in this case, it was the maintenance man. And I felt uh, one thing that, that one day they were doing this thing, what they had done before all the way back to the Studio 6, where I felt like my insides were turning. Like, and I felt like something was on the floor, floor below me in 309, like on the roof, like, like grinding against the roof of the ceiling. And, um, and so I went down to... I was getting real agitated because it was just annoying. It's just like when they do these certain things to you, like you can't sit still and you can't just, sometimes you can take it, but then other times it's just violating and it's horrible. And even if it's not painful, sometimes it's very uncomfortable and it's very unpleasant. And I went down there and the maintenance guy was uh, right when I was getting to the room, the maintenance guy came into the room. It was a vacant room. It didn't seem to, uh, at a glance, it didn't seem to be in need of repair of anything. I don't know why he went in there, so I don't know if there was anything in there. Probably not. It was probably just their ways of fucking with my perception. I don't know if he was in on anything at all, um, but at the time, I certainly thought so. I asked him in the elevator the, the next day, I think. I was like, was something going on in there? Like, I felt, I heard some bumping around on the, on the ceiling or on the floor below. Low, on, on the floor so I was thinking someone was like fucking with the ceiling or something like that and he seemed nervous or uncomfortable but he said no um, I was skeptical of him at the time very skeptical and to this day I don't know it's probably not It's probably, but, but uh, that means that they actually took the time and they do, they do this a lot of the times um, they took the time to, I guess, monitor when he was being sent to 309 or they got someone to send him to the 309 for whatever maintenance reason. And he went in the door with like a really, really card or something like that and shut the door. Like right as I went down there to confront, the, you know, to knock on the door and ask them if there was anything going on in there. So that was very suspicious to this day. I have no idea if there was any, any hotel staff involved with it. Um, 
I eventually got kicked out of there because they kept annoying me so much by talking to me and zapping me and all that stuff. But one day they were talking to me and I tried to over, um, tried to not hear them by taking something. It wasn't bubble wrap, but it was something kind of like a saran wrap from packaging from uh, a package that I had gotten. And um, I was like rubbing it together. And so it was creating like this squeaky, this squeaky whiny sound. And then I guess the hotels, um, staff had uh, uh, asked them to leave. I did have an outburst early on, like a week or two into the hotel stay. Um, they talked to me about it, and it was uh, everything was okay after that. Where I went on like this diatribe, where like they had taken me through like a whole story time thing, and um, I thought like a couple of friends were coming to pick me up. And I was going to be free from all this, yeah. and I went into like this big diatribe, possibly, yeah. you know, verbatim from what they were speaking, yeah. you know, through me <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. But um, uh, but then, and, and the second incident wasn't really an outburst, but they asked me to leave. The, the uh, girl named Carrie came to me, lady named Carrie came to my door, and I was all agitated and stuff, and I wouldn't really talk to her, and she called the cops yeah. for some reason. And they asked me to leave. And I went to my storage unit with Max down near uh, Techno Ridge, which is somewhat near MLK and uh, 183. And I actually walked and lied down and like took like a little nap on the lawn outside where some of the Travis County detectives were. And I was planning on talking to them the next day. But I eventually, uh, when the dawn hit, I, uh, I got a cab and I got some stuff from out of storage and took Max to uh, another hotel, the Motel 6 over near IH 35 and 51st street. I stayed there for a couple of days and, um, they played, uh, aha's, uh, uh, take on me over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, it was beyond annoying. One thing of note, uh, at the motel six, this would have been around the end of August or, and or the beginning of September of 2000, 18. Um, you'll notice in one of those videos that I have posted, if, I'm pretty sure I posted this one. If not, I'll be sure to post it. Um, you'll see on the ceiling, it looks like there's like waves, like little waves of light, like, like almost like when you're recording like an old CRT monitor and if you're recording it with a camera and you see like those little line, those little lines because they're not in the same frame rate or sync rate, it's kind of like that, even with the TV off. Um, on the ceiling, like I saw waves of shadows or waves of light on that. Now, when you look at that on the camera, people probably wouldn't notice that, but it's very important that you look at that. And I'll try to link that in this video, um, description, but it's very important that you look at that because I saw that with my eyes, nothing could have caused that in the room or outside of the room. That was one of their stupid projection yeah. thing that they were doing. It was like, it was just constant, like over, over the ceiling, just like this wave yeah. of light or shadows of, of, uh, of lines. Yeah. And then, um, I got fed up and then yeah. I fled town. Yeah. I took out max and I did have a court date yeah. coming up. Uh, but I was planning on going just to Chicago, yeah. but first I just drove North and I drove all the way yeah. to Oklahoma yeah. city. Um, I stayed in, a, I think, a Motel 6 there, too, for a few days. They were still there talking to me. The torture was not there as much, if at all. I don't remember any, if much, physical pain on that. But the voices were still there. They were a lot quieter. But that doesn't mean anything, because they can just turn the volume down. And then I went, uh, then I went after a few days there. I, I uh, attempted to drive to Chicago and I texted my friend Robbie like when I was like six or eight hours away from there and he said he was in Tennessee visiting his family and I was like shit um, and then I also had the court day so I turned around to go make my court day even though I eventually missed it anyway because it's nonsense but um, I made it all the way to Mount Vernon Missouri and that's where I turned around or that's where I actually that's where I got a hotel room but I turned around I think in Mount Vernon um, is where I turned around and I got a hotel room uh, either a few hours back from there or I got a hotel room in Mount Vernon and I had turned back like further towards Chicago in Missouri and I don't recall hearing any voices that night. I don't know if I lost them. I don't know if they had to recharge their devices. I don't know if they decided to go back to Austin but I do know that other friends of mine that 
were going through this nonsense and hearing them also moved away and stopped hearing the voices. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case for me coming down to McAllen. It's only a few hours away. They followed me to Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. They followed me here. I don't know if they're planning to follow me to Chicago or not, but um, it was like the last one of the last nights that I remember it being quiet. And then, um, uh, and then I came back and I stayed with a friend for a few days. Um, no, I stayed at the motel six for a few days. I went to a friend's house. I missed my court date because I was arguing with them all, all day. They do this thing where they make, they try to make you think it's over. They escalate things in these narratives when using the soundboard. And it makes you think that it's over. Cause first of all, how could people that be that ridiculous and cruel? And like, eventually there has to be a breaking point. And then they also point out all like these coincidences and things that aren't coincidences, but things that they fabricate and the some that are just coincidences coincidences that they fabricate and then they, they turn it into uh to make you think that you know oh your dad knows it's about to be over oh he's gonna rescue you oh everyone knows oh it's gonna be over it's gonna be over and then like you get to the point where you're like i'm not going to my court day i'm not doing this i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do this because it's over i want like i want my money i want my disability <laughs> i want my unemployment i want my uh uh I want my uh, wrongful termination <laughs> thing. They act like they're working on all this because they argue sometimes when they're not, when they're, I mean, they're still torturing me, but they go through and they do this advocacy phase where they like argue like everything because they've been in my life all those years, fucking with me. You know, even when I didn't know they were there, they were there when I lost my job. They were there when I was with Bernie and then he went crazy. And they even point those out all the time. <laughs> And sometimes they point out the cruelty. He's like, "Oh, well, isn't this so sad? Yeah, and it like doesn't it suck that like like the that my Constantine fucked you over, and, and like gave and gave a, a a PowerPoint of a presentation of ideas that were your ideas back to you and Sam, the, your office mate. And doesn't that suck? Yeah, doesn't that suck? And then they also he was on the soundboard for a little bit, acting like a proponent, like he had like I don't acting like everybody was meeting, and um." But those are just some examples of like what they do. Oops, sorry, Max. What they do to um, uh, to make you think that things are about to be over and resolved, and that you don't have to meet your normal obligations that you wouldn't have to meet if it weren't for these people, and if it, and if these people were caught or came forward. Um, so I stayed at a friend's place for a few days after the hotel six after I missed my court date. This is like early. This is in September. And then um, he had some family and friends coming into town. So I went to uh, the Wyndham near 71 and I 35. And I stayed there for one night. Um, I was hoping to sneaking Max into the pool. And um, uh, and then they just, they were nonstop. And they were also agitating me. I didn't have any drugs on me. If I had any drugs on me, um, if I wanted drugs, I could have gotten drugs, but I didn't want any. I wasn't, I wasn't using any drugs that night. Um, I wasn't using drugs that frequently. Um, I was using it sometimes to escape from this nonsense and to, and to stop from going crazy or from getting to a, like a really bad point because they, they try to drive people to hurt themselves or hurt other people. And I didn't want to be in that place. They also push you to point because they torture you or they tortured me and then they would stop doing that usually if I used and a lot, sometimes they would even say that well if you use we'll stop torturing you and then they still torture you but it's like sometimes it's like sexual and it feels good but then sometimes they still torture you and bother you but it's usually not at the level that it was before um uh, and then they it's, and they use that against you a couple of days later when they arrest you <laughs> but I was at the window and I think the Bill Maher show was on and I was actually crying in my bed and I just was trying to cuddle with Max and I just wanted to be left alone and they kept bothering me and bothering me and bothering me and I kept going and I was to take some breaks and I would be like shut the fuck up like leave me alone <laughs> and like and then eventually the hotel staff called the police and then I was evicted from that place that night and um I was driving with Max in the car up 35 and I was trying to play chicken with them. And I did this on the way coming back to town a little bit too at one point, but like you get to the point where you're like, surely there's going to be a stopping point with these people where they're going to be like, this is too much. We've gone too far. We have to stop this, you know, whatever this is, we have to stop it. These people don't do that. They love it. They love pushing people beyond that point. 
So I was like breaking and like stopping and breaking and stopping. And, um, and then I finally got off the freeway and then like I signed on the brakes really hard because those, and then Max slid off the passenger seat into the carpet or the, to this floor and, I, and um, he'd hit the glove compartment box. Not too bad, but like, it was like, it freaked me out. And I got around the car and I was sobbing and I picked Max up and there was a cop car that pulled up behind me. I got in the car and I drove off. I didn't want to deal with the cops because of what had happened the last time the cops you know, fuck, fucked me over. Um, ended up in a slow speed, slow, slow speed car chase on 35 uh, that got reduced to attempted debating, which is still a felony, which is surprising. Um, and they planted drugs on me, which they were so kind to drop those charges. But they planted like a gram and a half on me. I did not have any drugs on me. Um, that cop's going to regret doing that, planting those drugs on me. I don't know if it was the cop that wrote the report up. I assume it was, but we'll find out and he'll fucking regret that. But uh, he planted drugs on me, and it, so it's like so the and my bag was packed with suitcases, like the back seat and the trunk. I don't think they looked in the trunk at all. Well, obviously, they didn't. Um, was with bags, suitcases, bins, because um, I was like living at a hotel, so I was like I had stuff to like live off. You know, you know it was like kind of like one of apartment worth of stuff, sort of. Um, and um, and so, I'm, so it's like the first and only bag that you search just happens to have the drugs in it that I didn't have. Like, that's fucking bullshit, and you know it. He's going to get what's coming to him. And they, they said that through me, but he will. He'll regret that. And um, uh, it was probably one of the kindest arrests that I had. They were actually pretty kind. One the weird thing that they did is when they were driving me downtown around Hancock Center, they looped around an airport in the neighborhood caddy corner across it, and then they went stopped in Hancock Center in the Sears parking lot. And they just stopped for a few minutes and they opened the car and he's like, he asked me, he's like, why, why are you doing this? And I was, I think I said something like, I'm just tired of being fucked with or something like that. And I asked for the cuffs to be taken off and he said he wouldn't. Um, and by the way, Austin police, you do not have to cuff every single person that you put in the back of your cop car. What's the point of the cuffs anyway? You put the cuffs on the person and then you put them in the car. Then you take the person out of the car and you have a shield on it so they can't get into the front. Um, and then you have, then you take them to the jail and then you take them out of the car and unhandcuff them. So you're handcuffing them for a few feet and it's very uncomfortable to have your handcuffs handcuffed behind your back, especially when you're sitting in the back of the cop car. Can you at least handcuff our hands and and like in front of us, like in the front instead of like behind us? That's very uncomfortable. And it's like, if the person's not like resisting, like why cuff them at all? What are you protecting? Like you're not protect like, what, during the ride, they're going to do something? You have a shield back there. They can't do anything. You know, they could still kick. I mean, it's like they could still do as much damage. You know, the, having your arms doesn't really allow you to do much back there. They still have, like, the power and the weight of their feet. So it's total bullshit that you're cuffing. So that you cuff people and put them in the back. Like, you don't need to unless the person's, like, being so belligerent that you have to handcuff, <laughs> handcuff them and possibly, like, put them in whatever it's called when you have to do their legs too, which by the way, they did do that to me during, after one arrest when they transported me from jail to the, to the, from one jail to the other jail. And they literally had, had me like that. And I was like, and they had me in the cage on the bus too, as if I was like some serial killer. <laughs> I was like, what did you do? I was like, nothing. <laughs> and, um, uh, but they planted drugs on me. And when they took me downtown, um, they put me in a, a cell cause I, I think I kicked my shoes off. I was just pissed off. I just kicked them a few feet and they're like, uh, uh-uh. and so they like, they did put me in a cell for a little bit when I was waiting for medical, but then they put me in a cell and I was like, I want my dog and I want to go. And I still recognized one of the officers. He'd been at the Travis County Correctional Complex, not down, but this was downtown. And I don't think he recognized me. And then I saw the psychiatrist lady that had been in the jail when I was tortured at downtown not that she had necessarily had anything to do with it, but I saw her and I was like, I'm disappointed in you because <laughs> um, cause I, I, I don't, you know, they made you, they make you think that people are in on it. And uh, that was when I asked for water. They wouldn't give me water, any water. I was being dehydrated and my feet were zapped and my whole body was being like burnt and um, cramping up. Um, but uh, 
they put me in a padded cell downtown, which by the way, 99% of the people that you put in a padded cell downtown do not need to be put in a padded cell. I was not thinking about hurting myself or anybody else. I was complying with everything, even though I was in a bitchy mood or I was still like, I wasn't yelling. I wasn't, I was like, I want my dog and I want to go. I did like slap like my shoe against like the wall or something to get their attention. But it's like, that doesn't mean you need to put someone in a padded cell. What, is, what does a padded cell do versus a regular cell? There's no point to that. They just do that to fuck with you because they can throw you in there. They throw you in there naked and give you like a little blanket <laughs> or like a, this little Velcro mini skirt looking thing. That's like your blanket. And it's not even like a full size blanket. <laughs> you can't, can't even cover yourself. Your legs aren't covered. Um, in the padded cell, they started taking me through like the narr- They started taking me through the whole narrative thing. I can like, my dad was there to get me out and like, um, like during the so so speak car chase, um, they had acted. They were like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, you finally got to be in like a car chase. Like in this fun, we just want to have like one last fun time with you. Like they were the cops, and they probably are. <laughs> but downtown, they were like, I could, they did this whole narrative, and they had the soundboard too, as if my dad was coming to uh, pick me up, and like all the charges were going to be dropped, and blah blah blah. And then I was in the cell, and all of a sudden, like I felt like this thing. Like, like, I felt like it was like moving like through my body, and when it hit, it was like, Ugh! and when it hit my throat, I literally felt like Bart Simpson being choked by Homer Simpson. I was like, oh, 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 oh. and then we release it, <sighs> and they would go, and then they said something like, "Only twenty more minutes until you're us uh, until we <laughs> until we're done, and then you can get your settlement check." Acting as if like there was no footage or evidence before, and like they were just doing this as a formality to get me my my money that was owed to me. <laughs> um, they did that a few times. I was running around the cell like no 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 no, and like a few times people popped but, like their heads through the window, and they're like I don't see anyone in there with you. And the weird thing is is like when people talk like that to a, a crazy person, um, it's harder to distinguish between someone that's trying to just be nice to a crazy person versus someone that knows what's going on and is pretending not to there's, there's almost that's almost it's almost indistinguishable between those two um so basically i was being choked my throat was seizing up and i was like ah, and i kept running around the cell I'm like no 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 stop 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 and this i don't know how long it went, went on it felt like forever but it's probably like 20 minutes um and eventually like i fell asleep I think I told him. Oh, and then uh, after I fell asleep, all of a sudden I'm woken up to the door opening, and three guards come in there, and a medical and a medical staff. Two or three guards come in there with the medical staff, or two and two, I can't remember. And they brought that chair, that, this chair in there, and I was like, no, 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 I'll do anything, please, no, no. And like they put me in the chair and they cuffed me in there, and they put this mask over me, and I was like, I kept trying to like pull it down because I was like, I wasn't like there was no need for that. It's like, why would, if there was someone, even if they were crazy, that was settled down and sleeping in a cell, why would you run in there and traumatize them and basically assault them and strap them to the chair and then inject them with something? I was like, I was bawling after that. I was so violated all over again after I already being violated again. Um, I don't know what they injected me with. Um, but uh it sucked eventually i got transported somewhere else um i got to travis county correctional complex um hsb unit c i think it's the one that looks like it looks like medical but it's not medical um they have those raised beds that almost look like an exam table um then they moved me to hsb which is where like they they taper you down which is like the kind of crazy it's a mix of crazy people and not crazy people they put too many not crazy people in there and then um, I got moved to, um, uh, oh, and while I was in HSB, Unit B, <laughs> I was in a cell with four people. Not all the time, but there were four beds. Um, sometimes they were, they were all occupied. They told me that I was going to meet Micah, a friend of mine, who was part of like their narratives, too. <laughs> like he was that They spun into the narratives while I was at the Grove. He was one of the very few people, one of like two or three people that came over to my place at the Grove. And um, he knew somewhat what I was going through. And I think he was going through something similar as well, to some degree. And lo and behold, when I got moved, I got moved to um, Building 12, Unit C. 
uh, I was basically this, I was one bed away, one, one cell away from the bed that I was in a year prior. I don't think that was a coincidence. Um, it could be, but I don't think so. I was in 207 like A before, and then I got put in 206B, I believe. Anyway, I was on the top bunk in a, lot, a year before, and I was on the bottom bunk in this one, in the cell to the left of it, if you're looking, standing outside looking at the doors. I've got it in my documents. And then lo and behold, when I walk in there and carry my bed up there, Micah runs up to me, and I hugged him, and I was like, oh, my God. So I'll do another post about the jail time there. But uh, that was my arrest. They planted drugs on me and forced me into a slow-speed car chase. Uh, which is really the only thing I ever am guilty of in all my charges, but with reason, you know, because of this nonsense. So all, all my criminal charges would be dropped if this came out. And it sucks that not a single one of them will tell the truth. And that, the, that they would rather be on the side of, they would, rather, they would rather be in that little box of worst people in the entire world, most cruel people in the entire world, the dumbest people in the entire world. And they're torturing me while I'm doing this. This whole time, there literally feels like someone's punching me almost in the kidneys, a little bit below the kidneys. I don't have any back issues. I can sleep in my back wrong. There's nothing wrong with my neck or my back right now. If I do this, I can feel it on my hand and my forearm. I feel heat and electricity. This is a fucking nightmare. And it's going to end.